Uh, so Tom, uh, uh, Tom and I have been uh, working on this uh, Woonoomble Gumbra Healthy Plan, Healthy Country Plan now for for quite some time. Tom is much more closely associated with the the, the Woonoomble Gumbra community and has been um, associated with them all his life. I'm a much more recent interloper, so he can uh, he'll correct me where I go wrong. Um, this uh, the story I'm going to take you through is it's a bit less about Marathi specifically um, and a bit more about uh, an overall approach to uh, using open standards through healthy country planning and uh, for monitoring and evaluation and particularly a, a process of evaluation over time. Um, so we're talking about um, the Wunnable Gumbra Healthy Country Plan, the part of the world we're talking in the top left-hand corner of of Australia in the in the Kimberley region. Um, so the region that's sort of highlighted by the by the blue uh, boundary. It's um, it's about two and a half million hectares, uh, about one million hectares of uh, land and you know, one and a half of, of um, uh, ocean. Um, the timeline I'm talking about is this thing. I've just got to make you all go away so I can see my thing about a process from around the start of 2007 up until uh, last year is the timeline I'm, I'm going to, to go across. Um, where initial discussion about a plan began in, in sort of 2007. Um, developing a plan didn't begin until well into 2008. Um, it was completed in 2009. And then it didn't so much just sit around, but it, it, it wasn't actively used um, until really into 2011 when uh, Tom became more formally involved as a healthy country plan manager. And then the, the, the material I'm mostly going to concentrate on is from 2012 on this thing called UMEC, which I'll explain in a little while, uh, going from 2012 until, until now. The plan itself was developed through uh, a very active participatory process, a uh, number of meetings with communities on, on country, um, taking people through CAP, uh, we called it then, but the process of working with people using CAP, or with Wunnambugumbra people using CAP, was really the genesis of what became healthy country planning. So as we used CAP with people, we modified as we went to help help the help it work better at a at a, a community level with um, in Australia. Um, so the, the workshops occurred, as you can see there, over sort of a twelve month period. There were there were five workshops, um, yeah, out on basically out on country in camps. Most of them. Um, some in town, um, you know, working through the various steps of, of um, the open standards or, or of CAP. Uh, using, uh, many of you will remember fondly, the old Excel, uh, CAP Excel workbook. Um, Marathi, I think, at, those, at that stage was, was in its infancy, if, if at all. I can't quite remember if it was around yet at that point. Uh, I think we've lost your sound, Stu. Um, You're back again. Yep. Oh, did I disappear? Did I? Yeah, just for a moment. Um, I'll I'll just keep going and yep. fill in the blanks later. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, so. What I really want to talk about is this period from the point where the plan existed um, 
and the approach that's been taken to adapting the um, adapting the plan. So we're starting in 2012. Um, the uh, community um, decided to establish uh, this group called the Ungu Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, um, a group of people made up of um, local uh, local people with um, senior cultural knowledge, um, rangers, land managers, uh, but also outside advisors who have uh, good experience at working with the systems, the ecological systems, as well as with the communities themselves. So a mixed group of people as well as um, support agencies to assist the community in working through the plan and its, and its implementation. And I'll come to the terms of reference in a moment. In fact, I'll come to the terms of reference now. That's the healthy country plan process. So the, the terms of reference for this group were, in summary, these four things. So the group was set up to provide advice on whether the plan was being used. So uh, it took the view that, um, you know, the start of monitoring and evaluation of the plan was the first point. If the plan is being used, we can we can say something about that. Then if it's being used, is the plan working? Are we getting towards our um, objectives and ultimately our vision? Are we using the best traditional and Western knowledge? And how do we tell the story of, of how the plan's going along? So the very first meeting uh, that happened. So, you know, the plan was finished in 2009. This group met in, I'm oh, sorry, the plan finished in 2010. This group met in 2012. So it had been a little while between when, you know, one process finished and another started. Yeah, I'm on a meeting, but you can sit here and rest if you want, but don't talk. What are you okay? Um, so we, we, most of the first meetings really spent just reminding people of how the plan fitted together and what sort of approach we would take to uh, monitoring and evaluation and, and how we tell the story. Um, and so, you know, we worked with the group through this sort of approach. We developed the plan down the left-hand side and we were going to start telling the story of, of how it had been working on the, on the right-hand side. So the first meeting really didn't do much in terms of talking about monitoring and evaluation. It was really just why are we here and, and what are we doing? Um, the second meeting was then out on uh, out of town. The first meeting was in town. The second one was out on on, on country, and we was really focused on the first part. I'm just going to go back for a moment on this on the first part. Are we doing our actions? Are we putting the plan into practice? Are we using it? And so at that first meeting, we had a report from the from the rangers uh, setting out the work that they had been doing against the plan. And um, Tom can correct me, but it, it was, you know, it wasn't, the, the report itself was, it was interesting, the things had been done, but the connection to the plan wasn't that clear and, and it was patchy. It was the first time people had really tried to report against a plan and the activities that had been set out. Um, so it was, in, in my view, uh, really important to to you know start doing that reporting and learning how to report by doing reporting uh, against what had been set out in the plan. So that meeting was very much about what actions have we been have been done, and we had a go at just doing some basic kind of graphs and so on. You know what progress have we made? How how are things going? And starting to use some of the um, some of the metrics that are in Marathi for how you report on actions, you know, it's uh, minor issues, major issues and, and so on. Um, but with uh, a bit of interpretation. So just from that first meeting, you know, not getting too, too carried away with the more complex monitoring, just the fairly straightforward, are we using the plan? Um, next time around, 
Um, we decided to start to try and uh, work on the second part of the question, not are we using the plan, but is the plan working? Um, and to do that, when, when the Healthy Country Plan was first done, we didn't do things like results change. So we went back and went back to the major strategies, the major work areas, and started to retrofit the, the work that had been done uh, into some results change and notes um, and started to, to, to work on those. So this is you know, three years after the plan had um, been completed. Uh, we were starting to, to think about these sorts of things. Uh, and at each of our workshops, um, as well as time inside working on these things, we'd also um, spend time reviewing uh, a number of other elements of each of the plan. So when the plan was done, uh, it was done very much by the community. Um, the attributes and indicators for the targets hadn't really been fully reviewed. So at each workshop, we'd, we'd have an activity which focused on uh, the core thing we were doing the workshop for. So are we doing the actions or let's do some results change. But we'd also make sure we had time out on country with um, um, the, the committee and, uh, and we'd go and look at and talk about one or two targets and start to review the indicators and so on. Uh, so this is just us doing that. Um, by the time we got round to our fourth meeting, we were starting to really um, uh, get into the get into the swing of things. Um, so we were having regular reports now from the rangers, and these are the this is the activity that's happening. Uh, so the the are we using the plan stuff was was happening pretty pretty well, and we're also starting to now get a much better sense of what are the indicators that we need to be thinking about for effectiveness and also starting to um, uh, get on top of what indicators might be used for the targets as well and actually start to think about you know reviewing things like the um, the viability tables so you know we, we now you know a few years after the plan after you know, a few meetings of everybody getting used to what's in the plan and getting used to reporting against it, now starting to think about some of the, the more complex ideas in the plan. Uh, then we went to the beach and that was very nice. Um, and so by the fifth meeting, we then started to think about reviewing the, the, the threat uh, matrix um, and you know, really started to, to dig back into this material to say, okay, what was said when the plan was initially put together? Do we still agree with that? Uh, and so some quite detailed review of the, of the, the threat and uh, added some, we added some new threats. Uh, we revised the ranking on some other threats and, and so on. Um, but also by this point, it was clear that the plan, despite being driven by the community and, and all the thinking we've been doing around it, the plan itself had missed a, a big area of um, uh, indicators. And, and so we started to, we had a workshop to actually start to introduce a whole new set of uh, indicators and ideas, uh, social indicators um, to you know, make the plan much, much richer. So over a period of about five years, um, we got a handle on are we using the plan and that had become quite regularised, reviewed each of the major strategies and developed results chains around them and some clear objectives and started to report against those and had started to uh, really nail down the key indicators that would be used for the target. Uh, which brings us to this time last year, uh, where we did a, a large um, midterm, sort of halfway, as it says, halfway-ish midterm review. 
or evaluation so of, of the plan itself. Uh, and we looked at three, looked at the plan sort of a bit of a, an overview in three ways. Um, so from a process point of view, um, was the, uh, you know, uh, have we been doing a good process from a community perspective? Um, so just because the plan exists and just because we're using it doesn't mean the community's happy with it and, and, and so on. Um, are we doing a good process from, a, from an open standards and planning point of view? And you know, is the plan uh, actually, um, we did quite a bit of work on, on all three of those, some um, community-based surveys that were developed and run um, with some researchers with the community to, to look at both the awareness of the plan and um, what people's perceptions of its impact were. Um, uh, an independent uh, view, some, some work was done by uh, some independent folks having a look at what had been done and um, how the plan was perceived from an outsider's point of view. Uh, and, and again, just looking at the, the various indicators and uh, seeing whether things had, had changed very much. Um, that was again, some more meetings. Didn't spend a lot of time sitting around talking when you're doing this sort of thing. Um, but a couple, of, a couple of key things to pull out of that. Um, there's a paper coming out I'm not sure when Tom can probably Tom can I'm sure update us. There's a, a paper coming out which is which puts a lot of detail into the midterm evaluation. But a couple of observations I'd like to make. Um, so the Rangers did a as they do at every meeting, they did a report on the work that they were doing. But the difference between this report and the one that was done five years earlier was uh, uh, dramatic. In that uh, this time when the when the report was put forward, it was clearly linked to what had been proposed to be done or what changes had been made in the plan over the years. Um, it uh, provided evidence, here's what we're doing, here's why we're doing it, here's how it worked. Uh, it was just a, it was, you know, a, huge, a huge change in the capacity of the group to, to talk about what was being done and what needed to be done. Um, we did some self-assessment work on the on how we thought the process itself had been going and and interestingly although we'd worked on results change people still found that they were pretty challenging to get their head around which is not surprising and although this group itself has been monitoring it was the one area um, of all the self-assessment areas it was the one area that the group marked itself harder that's because um, yeah, you know the the, the group really understands now much better uh, what's required in order to be able to tell the story and, and so um, yeah it's a good understanding of, of where the gap is gaps are there. Uh, a number of changes have now been made to the plan. Um, some of the uh, one of the one of the targets has been revised up because of the work that's been done but most of the other targets it's too early to tell whether there's been any change. It's only been five years. Um, some of the threats have changed and we've introduced a new target. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, it's been going along uh, really well. This is the, the UMEC as it stands today. Um, it's time. Um, so the key, I guess, a, a key message for me uh, to pass on out of all of that is, as I say, the, the plan finished, it was a, a year or two until somebody really took um, the leadership on driving that plan forward. And it's been five years of steadily working as a group to think through how it would most effectively be measured and monitored and reported against. Um, and so these things take time, uh, but I think it's yeah. going well. Um, Lastly, it's the Marathi uh, group, so I should say something. We've, we've moved, the whole plan's now moved into Marathi and we do use Marathi um, to, to keep track of it. But this is more about the process. Well, thanks, Stu. That's, that's really interesting. Um, Tom, have you got anything more you want to add to what Stu's talked about? Um, Oh, the main thing I just want to say is that, um, yeah, I think having this um, 
having this a committee like this um, is really useful because they they do a lot of the work um, of the open standards, you know, the monitoring and the evaluation, um, and so that takes the pressure off, um, you know, staff members to have to try and muddle through a lot of these things. So, uh, and I think uh, having a, a workshop every year or, or twice a year, uh, it's a really good discipline uh, yep. to make sure that you keep on top of the work. So uh, it's been really valuable from that point of view. Yeah. And so are they still planning to meet about every year? Is that the plan now? Yeah, we met twice a year at the start because there was a lot of work, um, not really, uh, even though the plan was finished, there was a lot of things that hadn't really been well developed, like results chains. Uh, but once that was sort of um, established, um, we have gone down to once a year now. Um, and so we're about to meet again this month. Uh, yep. Great. Well, that's terrific. Um, Stu, there's a question in the Q&A box. Can you see that? You're back on mute. You might need to unmute yourself. Uh, yes. So in the process, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, so were, were you focused on trying to know whether you were really implementing the plans and activities as you'd set them out, I, I'm guessing that says? Yeah, so that basically that's that's right. That's the that the question is. So are we are we is the plan being implemented? So you've spent all this time developing it. Are you actually using it? Yep. And then if you are using it, are you um, seeing the um, are you seeing the results you expected or what what effect are you having? So it's really uh, you know, it's really the two questions. Yep. Cool. Um, there's a few more questions in there. If they've got quick answers, go for it. Um, otherwise, I might get you to answer by text. Looks like they might have quick answers. Do you want to go for it? Uh, I think you might have disappeared, Stu. Yeah, I can back. probably answer them if you like. Um, yeah. so in terms of whether the plan is um, for fully um, in Marathi, um, and whether rangers are using Marathi. Um, we still haven't got to the stage where rangers are using Marathi as a as a day-to-day -day tool, but we've um, we've made a lot of done a lot of work to make sure that the day-to-day -day work plans that rangers are using are directly correlated with what's in Marathi and what's in the Healthy Country Plan. Whereas when everything first started, the rangers kind of had their own work planning process, and there wasn't good integration. Um, and so now we've uh, that we've sort of used results chains to organise all of our um, strategies and objectives into 10 what we call operations. And so the ranges report against those 10 things now. Uh, and it's much simpler than talking about 22 strategies and uh, so many objectives. So yep. Um, yep. yeah, that's working. And um, in terms of where the funding for the process came from, um, uh, the group Warrnambool Garmbra have a, an, uh, a partnership with Bush Heritage. So. Uh, some of the funding comes from Bush Heritage and some comes from the Australian government through the Indigenous Protected Area and working on country range of programs. Mm. Great. Thanks very much, Tom. And thanks, Stu. That's, that's terrific. That's really interesting stuff. I think that project's just amazing myself. <laughs> Good example for um, 